preach, and I'm not going to preach long, but I just want to say thank you for what you are doing. The impact that you are making around the world is tremendous. And I would like to say that I thank you for your hospitality. Also, I want to thank you because your church in our last giving year of our reporting was number one in the state of Virginia with a total of $40,196.40. We have over 4,500 churches, and I'm sorry I didn't look at the number, but you are in the top 100 churches of the entire fellowship, and I thank you for that. And I know that's not an accident, but it's because of a day like today and the tremendous sacrifice that you give. And I do want you to know that every cent that you send to us in Global Missions, there are auditors, outside auditors that are not uh, connected with our church necessarily, that do audits of everything that we do. When I travel, I have receipts. Everything is accounted for. And I want to thank you so very much for the difference that you are making around the world. Last year in that reporting, we baptized over 140,000 people in the name of Jesus Christ. And I thank you for making that possible. I'm glad to tell you that today, uh, as of our last report last year, it was in September of last year, we are now preaching in 190 of the 210 countries of the world. We only lack 20 countries to have every church with the UPC work. And I want to say I thank God for the United Pentecostal Church. The choir, I enjoyed it so much. But thank God that we're part of a group that I pray for you, you pray for me, and we're working together. We can do so much together than do it individually. We live in a world today that many local churches want to do their own thing. They don't want to be part of a national organization. They want to do their own missions program. And and, and I'm not going to criticize them necessarily. But what that does open the door for is connections with people that I wonder what kind of accountability they have. They give thousands of dollars to people that they really are not. There's no way to know what happens with that. But I thank God in our organization we have accountability. When you give money to a country or overseas. Now that's not saying bad things don't ever happen because we work with people. I said we work with people, but we do have an accounting system and accountability that we work with that, and I thank God for it. Thank you for everything you're doing. I was just looking at the cards you're going to fill out at the end of the service, and out of the six items that are on there, I'm positive that four of those have a worldwide effect. I said four of them have a worldwide effect. And when I end my message today, I'm going to end with several reports. But I'd like to say I thank God for Father's Day offering. The men go around the world building things around the world, our men's ministry. The Mother's Memorial, I'm glad to tell you that I see missionaries everywhere. And our missionary kids and the families that receive appliances from the ladies, students that receive support for their education uh, around the world through Mother's Memorial. She's for Christ. Hallelujah. Just recently I was in Bangladesh and I thank God for a She's for Christ car that I rode in in Bangladesh. And uh, then of course um, I thank God for those areas and may God richly bless you. Aren't you glad to be part of the kingdom of God? I said aren't you glad to be part of the kingdom of God? May God richly bless you just recently, and let's stand together. I've been in Bangladesh. I bring you greetings from Bangladesh. Hallelujah. Where we were in the All India Summit, we were with organizations that are not UPC working together with them. I don't have time to tell you all that's going on there, but it's absolutely miraculous. I thank God. Then I was in the All India Council, something that we have in no other part of the world, but we have 1.3 billion people there. We have three different organizations that work in that country, and I thank God. I don't have time to tell you the miracle of that. Then I was in, where was I after that? Let me see. I was in London for the dedication of a building that was a congregational building that was built in the 1880s. It is literally a cathedral, but a few years ago they sold that to the uh, Hindu religion. It became a Hindu temple. But I'm glad to tell you now the United Pentecostal Church has bought it. Hallelujah. They painted all the red walls a, a, a more neutral color now. And the mayor was there of Croydon and, uh, Croydon and another area. And they were there so happy because now it's a church again. A United Pentecostal Church that's worth about six million dollars. Hallelujah. And that's what they paid for it. And I thank God for that. Aren't you glad for what God is doing in London? 
Then I went to uh, Executive Global Council in, in Nairobi, Kenya, where we had representatives from all over the world of the United Pentecostal Church. Then I came back home and went someplace. And then I went to, uh, where did I go? Hallelujah. I went uh, to Africa again in Johannesburg, South Africa. And then I went to Northeast India, where in an area of India we have 102,000 believers just in that one area. And then I went to Railco this week, which is Leadership a Summit, 20. Uh, 31 countries represented in Miami of our leadership, our top leaders, and then there was a Spanish summit with 23 countries. God is doing great things around the world, and that would not be possible if it wasn't for churches like this. Can you say praise God? Can you say praise God? Hallelujah. I go to school of missions tomorrow for two weeks. I'll be with missionaries for two weeks. Then my next trip is to Paris, France. You want to send greetings to the church there? And then I go to Madrid, Spain. You want to send greetings to Madrid, Spain? Hallelujah. And then I don't know where I go. I may go to heaven. You want to send greetings to heaven? No, you know that one already. No. Hallelujah. I want you to go with me. Don't send greetings. Hallelujah. But uh, I thank God for what God is doing. You're such a pleasant church. And, and, and what a beautiful congregation. Now, I mean that sincerely. Hallelujah. I see a congregation that represents so many aspects of our culture in North America. And that's the way the church ought to be. I said, that's the way the church ought to be. Can you say praise God? Hallelujah. If you have your Bibles this morning, I'm asking you to turn with me to Numbers chapter 13, and I'll be reading verses 1 through 3. Uh, 1 and 2, excuse me. And then I'm going to read verses 2 through 4 uh, of Numbers chapter 14. And I want to preach for a little while this morning on a thought that may be a little bit different. But I want to preach on a title that says, 11 days or 40 years, what will it be? 11 days or 40 years, what will it be? Numbers 13, 1 and 2. And the Lord spoke to Moses saying, Send, uh, send men to spy out the land of Canaan which I am giving to the children of Israel from each tribe of their fathers. You shall send a man, every one a leader among them. Then Caleb, verse 30, I'm sorry, I'm confused about my message. Uh, verse 30, Then Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and take possession, for we are well able to overcome. And I'm reading the New King James Version. I hope that's all right. I don't know how that got in my notes. Hallelujah. I usually do King James Version. I hope it's not a problem. Hallelujah. And uh, then in Numbers chapter 14, verses 2 through 4, And all the children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron. Everybody said complain. And the whole congregation said to them, If only we had died in the land of Egypt, or if only we had died in this wilderness. Verse 3, Why has the Lord brought us to this land to fall by the sword, that our wives and children should become victims? Would it not be better for us to return to Egypt? And then verse 34, According to the number of the days in which you spied out the land, forty days for each day you shall bear your guilt one year. Namely, 40 years, and you shall know my rejection. Can you say praise God? I've come to preach today that it's God's will for us to have a victorious life. I said it is God's will for us to have a victorious life. Can you say praise God? And you can have it, but don't get it in 40 years. Let's do it in 11 days. I said, let's don't do it in 40 years. Let's do it in 11 days. Lord, I come into your presence and I praise you and I thank you for the blessings that you have bestowed upon us. I ask you now, God, that you would pour out your spirit upon this congregation. Lord, I know it's your will for me to preach this message today. And I pray, God, that you would bless and that you would anoint each and every one. In the name of Jesus, I pray right now for someone that is here that is being stalled by their own unbelief to receive what you've given to them. Let them be set free today, God. In the name of Jesus, I ask God for the Norfolk area. Help us to realize that evangelism isn't something we should put off, but we should do it even in the Walmart like our brother did. Not wait and bring him to church, but just pray him through right there in the Walmart in Jesus' name. Help us, we pray, in the name of the Lord. And everybody said, Amen. Before you're seated, take somebody's hand and ask them the question, 11 days or 40 years, what will it be? 
Hallelujah. And you may be seated. Once again, I repeat, it is God's will for us to have a victorious life. It's God's will that we overcome sin. Can I get a witness this morning? Jesus wants us to live a life that is a complete life, a full life, a joyous life, filled, hallelujah, with wonderful things and a fulfilled, wonderful life. Our children can be trained up in the ways of God and have fun. I said our children can be raised in the way of God and have fun. Yesterday I was downtown and we ate and there was a bunch of young people down there. Hallelujah. I was looking at some of those guys and I thought, how in the world can they walk trying to hold their pants up the way they're doing? I mean, you know what, folks? I can't imagine having to pull my pants up all the time. And I'm not going to get into all that. But I'm glad that you can live with your pants up and be happy. I'm sorry. That's not in my notes for sure. Praise God. But you know what? It's just we live in a world that, that you think you got to experiment with all this junk before you can really be happy. But I'm glad to tell you that I received the Holy Ghost when I was 13. I thank God that some of the greatest girls I ever dated were Christian epistolic girls. I'm glad to tell you that we had a great time. And I'm not going to give TMI, hallelujah. But we didn't do all the stuff that they told us in the world we had to do. Can you say praise God? Hallelujah. I'm glad that living for God is fun. Adults with meaningful relationships. Not problem-free lives. I didn't say that. We all have problems. But I'm glad that when I have a problem, I've got a God that's able to take me by the hand and help me. I'm glad that when I stand beside the casket of my loved one, I'm not by myself, but I feel the loving arms of the Lord Jesus around me. I'm glad that in the lonely days of a widow or a widower, you're in that house by yourself, and I know it's not happy, and I know that there are tears, but isn't it great to be able to kneel down and to be able to feel the presence of God and know that God is with us? Isn't it great to serve God? I said, isn't it great to serve God? I don't want to live any other life, but I want to serve Him. Let's raise our hands and thank Him for it right now. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, there are valleys, but what is Jesus? What? He's the lily of the valley. Hallelujah. Yes, there are dark nights, but I thank God in the dark night He is. The bright and the shining star. Yes, there are moments that we're hungry, but I'm glad to tell you that He is the bread of life. Yes, there are times that we get thirsty, but I'm glad to tell you that He is the water of life. Hallelujah. I'm glad to tell you it's great to serve Jesus. I said it's great to serve Jesus, and you don't have to wait to do it. I said you don't have to wait to do it. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day to make a decision. Can somebody shout hallelujah? hallelujah. I said today is the day to do it. I thank God that there's healing for your sickness. There's victory in your weakness. I remember Brother Isabel Lobato, who was a man that lived in San Salvador. He was a deacon in another church that did not believe in the oneness of God. They believed in the Holy Ghost, but in their church they just didn't receive it very frequently. But I thank God that the United Pentecostal Church is well known in El Salvador, that when you not want the Holy Ghost, you can come to our crusades and conventions and get the Holy Ghost. That's what we're known for. In fact, some of those Trinitarian pastors, they even send their members to our conference so people can be filled with the Holy Ghost. Isabel and Reina, that was his wife, they were having marital problems, very, very bad ones. And so he heard about the convention. And he went to the convention, if I'm not mistaken, it was in Estadio Flor Blanca, hallelujah, which is the second largest stadium. And I remember in that meeting, we had probably 15,000 people. And he came and 
and he was filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And he went back to his church. And when he went back to his church, he thought, well, I'm just going to stay here now. I've got the Holy Ghost. But there was something that began to gnaw at him. There was something that began to say as he prayed in the Holy Ghost, there's something missing in your life. There's something that you don't have. And so he began to study the Word of God and realize he needed to be baptized. He needed to be baptized again in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm glad to tell you that he brought his whole family. They were baptized in the name of Jesus. He became a deacon in the church. Now he is a licensed minister. Hallelujah. I want you to know, don't do it in 40 years when you can do it in 11 days. I said, don't sit there with your arms folded and say, well, I'll wait for tomorrow when it can happen today. Come on, somebody. You're battling something in your life. But today you need to decide, I'm not waiting 40 years. I'm going to do it today in the name of Jesus. Come on, let's raise our hands and pray for somebody in this room right now. We love you, Jesus. 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 We love love you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. I love you, God. I magnify you and glorify your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'll never forget Maria Solorsano when she came to church on that Sunday afternoon in the two o'clock service. We had to have three services to accommodate the fifteen to seventeen hundred people. But I remember, hallelujah, that when she came to church that day, there were two ladies on either side of her helping her to walk into the building. That day when the altar call was made after I preached, I saw them help her down to the front. And she came to the front and she prayed. You know what she did? She repented of her sins. I said, that's number one what you've got to do. Repent of your sins. Hallelujah. And then she said, I want to be baptized in the name of Jesus. And they helped her up into the room and she got down into the water and they baptized her in the name of Jesus. I don't remember how many we baptized that day, but there were several. And when they came up out of the water, they always brought them up to the platform and we put them in a ladies group and then we put them in a teaching thing and we did it right there. And so she began to make her way. I said, help her, help her. They said, no, we don't have to help her now. Because when she got in the water and was baptized in the name of Jesus, something happened to her legs. The healing power of God touched her. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Why don't you be baptized today? I said, why don't you be baptized today? You got a need? I want you to know that's not just a bathtub. This is not just a rubber ducky pond. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is a place where when you're baptized in the name of Jesus by submersion, there's something that takes place. I want you to know God washes your sins away and you come out of those waters into a new life. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You may be sitting with Yeah, I see some of you sitting there looking at me saying, oh, I'm just going to wait. I'm a good Hispanic. I know what it is. Manana. I'm a good Hispanic. Manana. Hallelujah. In fact, this week, Terry and, and Melanie Shock were there, and I was supposed to take them to the meeting, and they were supposed to be down at 8.30 in the morning, and I said, just give me five more minutes, and I finally was about ready at 8.55. <laughs> Somebody else had already taken them. Hallelujah. I said, I'm sorry. I'm around the Hispanics, and I get that manana spirit on me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But you know what? Don't you get a manana spirit on you today. I said, don't get a manana. The devil has told you you can't be victorious. But I come to tell you the devil is a liar. And I come to tell you don't stand around murmuring and complaining. Don't get a 40-year spirit. I said, don't get a four. The devil wants to put a 40-year spirit on you, but don't let him do it. I said, don't let him do it. In the name of Jesus, may God help us. Can you say amen? 
Hallelujah. The scripture setting of our message. Moses had sent the spies to evaluate the land. Not to decide if they would conquer it, but how they would conquer it. But the problem is that's what happens with committees. You get committees together and they want to get into, well, we don't think we can. It wasn't if they could do it. It was how they were going to do it. But they got involved in the if. And they didn't think it could happen. The giants are too big. Just a, two weeks ago, I preached a message in uh, North Texas, I think it was. Yes. Halle- I preached a message that's entitled, what is the name of that message? Hallelujah. I know it's about raisins and grapes. Hallelujah. Give me this mountain. Give me this mountain. And I may preach it here, but I'll just go ahead and give you a little uh, version of the raisins and the grapes. I bring a big cluster of grapes. And oh, Caleb, he came back with those grapes and he said, we can do it. But the problem is, the ten overruled the two. I said, the ten overruled the two. And the congregation began to complain. And he kept one of those grapes. But you know what it turned into? Turned into a raisin. But he kept holding on to that raisin. And 45 years later, and that's my message, I'm not going to preach at all. But 45 years later, he said, give me my mountain, I have waited. Come on, you don't have to wait 40 years for your mountain. I said, you don't have to wait 40 years for your mountain. Now, if you want to sit there and moan and groan and complain, God bless you, just wait if you want to. But I've come to tell you, today is the day of victory. Today is the day to say, you know what, I know I've got some problems, but I'm going to have victory. You know what, I don't feel like dancing today. But watch me. I don't, I, I don't feel like giving my tithes today, but here they are in the name of Jesus. I don't feel like singing, but you open your mouth and you sing. Come on, get rid of that 40-year spirit. I said, get rid of that 40-year spirit. You haven't shouted, it's time to shout. Hallelujah. I said, you haven't worshipped, it's time to worship. You don't feel like it, do it anyway. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's raise our hands right now and magnify Him. We love you, Jesus. 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 I love you, God. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. God bless you. You may be seated. Come on, folks. Caleb gave the report. Let's go up at once and take the land now. Come on, there are some things that we must do now. Anger, overreaction. Yes, you may need to wait. But when it comes to sin in our lives, I said when it comes to things in our lives that shouldn't be there, don't play around with it, please. But rise up right now. Don't get a 40-year spirit. Hallelujah. The other spies placed their eyes on the circumstances and not on God who was able. And by the way, He is still able and He can deliver you. They murmured and said, We cannot do it. Wish we had not done this. Full of doubt and lack of faith complaining, moaned and groaned and critical and no vision. And I know in NAC, there's nobody like that. Moaned and groaned and complained. Hallelujah, we can't do it. We don't have the money to do it. I was just in South Texas where they have formed a district just a few years ago. They're now talking about a new district. And of course, in our procedure, they debate it. It wasn't a bad debate, but there were some of them that said, well, we just don't have the money to do it. You know what? If you wait for money, you'll never do it. It's kind of like getting married. Well, I want to have everything perfect. God bless you, folks. When I had gotten married, I didn't have two nickels to rub together. But you know what? I thank God today. In July, I'll have my 45th anniversary. We have three kids. We have six grandkids. And I hope my daughter, who's a missionary in Latvia, is not listening to this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thought they'd never have a baby. My son-in-law's a great guy, but he is, he's got more degrees than a thermometer. Hallelujah. And he's got to have it all figured out. They didn't get married till he was 33. He's 40 now, and they still don't have kids. (laughs) 
If they're listening to this, I'm bad in trouble. Hallelujah. But I want you to know, well, we've got to have this figured out. And I know there are people like that, but I'm glad to tell you that I got a call just a few weeks ago. My daughter's pregnant. Hallelujah. With my seventh grandbaby on the way. Come on, folks. Don't take a 40-year trip. Let's take an 11-day journey. Come on, in the name of Jesus, in all sincerity, I wish I could tell you the people I've run into in the years that I've traveled as director of global missions and as a missionary. And I've had people come up to me with a head full of white hair and with tears running down their face and saying, I just wish, God, I would have listened to God when I was younger and I wanted to go to the mission field and I didn't do it. And they're not lost, but they're just lamenting over a 40-year spirit that got into them. Come Come on, somebody, I'm preaching to you today. Don't wait another day. Come on, stand up and do what God wants you to do. Yes, I feel overcome sometimes when I see the world and what we've got to do, but I'm not going to sit around and cross my arms. I'm not going to sit around and lament over the money we don't have, but I'll use what we've got. And you know what? I thank God that we are going to reach this world. I thank God that we can reach Norfolk. But we can't have a 40-year mentality. Would you raise your hands and ask God to touch you right now? God, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every person. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, God. I love you, God. I love you, God. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on, Mom and Dad. Raise your hands. Don't you pray with the 40-year mentality. God can raise those kids up. I said, come on, children. Come on, pray for your parents. God can restore that parent in the name of the Lord. But He'll not do it with a 40-year mentality. We've got to have an 11-day mentality. Can you say praise God? Hallelujah. The background of my title, really I could call it a few days, but I'm calling it 11 days. In Numbers chapter 13 and verse 26, the Bible says they were in Kadesh Barnea when they returned and gave the report. Joshua chapter 4 and verse 19 said they went into the promised land at Gilgal. If you study it geographically, it was approximately 120 miles from Kadesh Barnea to Gilgal. There were approximately 3 million of them. If they were marching, many hundred abreast the line could have been at least three to four miles long. It is reasonable that they could have made it within 11 to 15 miles a day. That would have taken them between 8 and 11 days to get there. And there is a scripture that mentions 11 days in Deuteronomy chapter 1 and verse 2. It says there are 11 days journey from Horeb by the way of Mount Seir and to Kadesh Barnea. We are not sure of all of the factors, but I am going to say it was 11 days. It would have taken them 11 days but it took them 40 years I said it took them 40 years because of their unbelief and lack of faith they died in the 40 year journey when they could have enjoyed 39 years 11 months hallelujah and 20 days in the promised land why didn't appeal to their reckoning didn't appeal to their reasoning. They kept looking back, remembering the temporal joys of Egypt. They rejected God's leadership, their leader Moses. They wanted to stay in their comfort zone. The fear of the unknown, criticizing and complaining, looking for what felt good to them and not what felt good to God. Hallelujah. 11 days or 40 year mentality. We cannot wait. We have our salvation to take care of. Yes. Hallelujah. But I want you to know don't wait. May God help us in the name of the Lord. I said may God help us in the name of the Lord. Forgive me as general director of global missions. When I became director our missionaries were deputizing up to three years to raise their funds. Honestly I stayed in there a while and I got affected by them 
mentality. I had just about reached the point, Brother Blankenship, that I thought, we'll never take care of this deputation thing. I don't know what to do. I would create committees and we would study. But I want you to know, I decided I'm not going to give up. I thought about resigning, but I said I'm not going to resign. I know there's a way. I don't have time to tell you about it, but I thank God for I am global today. Which is... A, a parallel giving mechanism that right now you know what our career missionaries average deputation time is 8.3 months even our newly appointed missionaries just about one year and three months you know our one year I'm sorry one year and one month how 13.5 months I'm glad to tell you that I'm not going to have a mentality that we can't do it come on somebody here today you've been a little bit discouraged but today is your day to listen to this get rid of that 40 year mentality get rid of that 40 year mentality God is able but you've got to act like you believe it I said you've got to act like you've got to have a little faith. I said you've got to have a little faith. You've got to believe God can do it. Can you believe it? Can you believe God can do it? Let's raise our hands and ask God to help us right now. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We worship you, God. We adore you, Lord. We adore you, God. Hallelujah. 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 I was just in Wisconsin for the election of the new district superintendent there. The former district superintendent before the one that just stepped out was Brother John Grant. Told, and I heard a message when he preached from Madison, Wisconsin. He told of one year he had a heart attack. He had many, many ailments, physical ailments in his body that year. His leg, he had a problem with that. His son's wife left him, ran off with another man. His son was depressed. And his son told him one day, I'll see you at church, but didn't show up. And I want you to know that day they looked for him. And he had committed suicide. This all in one year. But I want you to know he didn't get on a 40-year trip. He had every reason to say, I'm not going to continue on. But can you imagine? I can't imagine losing one of my kids that way. But he said, I'm not going to let the devil stop me. He said, I'm going to keep on preaching. He overcame it. Hallelujah. He didn't get on a 40-day journey. But he took a few days. And he went from 250 members at that time to 1,000. Why? Because he said, I'm not getting on a 40-year journey. Brother and sister Blankenship, the devil could have put you on a 40-year journey. But I'm glad to tell you, we're not accepting no 40-year journey. We're going to have an 11-day mentality. Come on. I said we're going to have an 11-day... I said we're going to have an 11-day mentality. You don't have the job you need? Well, why don't you stand up and start shouting like you do have the job you need? Your family's not in the church? Well, you ought to stand up and start worshiping God like they're already in the church. Come on. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Ala Maria Satalaba Karyandalaba Hariatalaba. Come on, don't you let the devil stop you. I said, don't you let the devil stop you. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Have I shown you the, and I don't have it ready, but didn't I show you probably last year the video of El Salvador on the big stadium and how we filled it up? Did I show you that? Since Have I done that or not? Maybe I didn't. The next time I come, I will. Hallelujah. But I used to drive past the largest stadium, and I would tell people, we're going to have our national convention there. It seats 60,000 people. I left the country. I wasn't the superintendent of the work, and it never happened. But I'm so glad that God doesn't do things based on who we are or on what we say. It's based upon what He says. 
And he says, I'm with you always, even until the end of the earth. I'm going to give you victory. I'm glad to tell you that a few months ago, we were in that largest stadium, 35. And I've got a picture of it. I thought I'd already shown it to you. Hallelujah. I apologize. 35,000 people in that stadium. And in one day, God filled three uh, 3,842 people with the Holy Ghost for the first time. Come on, 40 years or 11 days, what's it going to be? 40 years or 11 days, what's it going to be? In the name of Jesus, I ask God that you would help us. Come on, let's raise our hands one more time and ask God to help us. We love you, Jesus. 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 Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Not long ago, I was in the country of Namibia with brother and sister Eichern. Sorry to say, folks, I was driving down the street and there were women everywhere. Hallelujah, that just were women. Hallelujah. And they were African women. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And they don't believe in wearing many clothes. Hallelujah. And they were everywhere. And I thought, my God, how can we have revival here with all these naked people running around? Hallelujah. But you know what? I'm glad to tell you. Here's a report from him. We are happy that we just baptized a Trinitarian pastor. 30 years a Trinitarian pastor. I've known him over a year now. He's already baptized in the name of Jesus. This month we baptized three others at our home to receive the Holy Ghost. The work is moving on in Namibia. Why? Because he didn't have a 40-year mentality. He had an 11-day mentality. In Sierra Leone, we went there for the conference where there hasn't been a missionary for years. Now, Rusty and Adrian Riddick are going there. And in that conference, there were 297 souls that were filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost in Sierra Leone in Africa. A few days before that, they had the last hour revival. A four-day program was held, and they had 409 souls filled with the Holy Ghost. That doesn't happen with a 40-year mentality. Thank God for Adrian, uh, Rusty and Adrian Riddick that are on their way there. Hallelujah, a funeral in Malawi. Pastor Saudi was one of our older pastors who also worked as a sanitation director. I think I know what that is. Hallelujah. At his funeral, the Spirit of the Lord moved, and they could have had a 40-year mentality. (laughs) That's fine. You can cry at a funeral, no problem. But I'm glad to tell you, you know what happened? They didn't have a 40-year mentality. They just preached the Word of God. And you know what happened at Pastor Saudi's funeral? 30 people were baptized in the name of Jesus. I said 30 people were baptized in the name of Jesus. Oh, come on, Brother Hal. That happens overseas. It can't happen in Norfolk. Well, just try him and see. I said just try the Lord and see. Just try to preach a message of salvation at a funeral and see what happens. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Here's a message from Lagos, uh, Nigeria, from Brother and Sister Phelps. If you've never been to Lagos, you've de- de- undoubtedly got an email from them. Hallelujah. One in your bank account. But I want you to know there's something else happening in Nigeria besides wanting your bank account. They baptized 127 people. 96 were filled with the Holy Ghost. 35 churches in the city of Lagos. Thank you for not having a 40-year mentality today. Thank you for 11-day mentality saying, you know what? We're going to help in PIMs. Hallelujah. We're going to help in getting the gospel to the world. Would you raise your hands and ask God to help us to have an 11-day mentality in the name of Jesus. 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 In Ghana, everybody say 11 days. 11 days. 
with an 11 day mentality the first jubilee crusade took place in tamale there was a great presence of God in the services throughout the weekend six received the Holy Ghost but listen the crusade was aired on two radio stations they would have the potential of reaching five million people we don't have the money for the radio program. We can't do it. Come on. Get rid of that 40-year mentality. Have an 11-year mentality. Hallelujah. And do it in the name of Jesus. In Ghana, 15, 19 baptized. Uh, 15 filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Can you say praise God? In Hong Kong, five baptized in the name of Jesus. In Bangladesh, while I was there, we dedicated the building, the wall and the new building they're building, several stories for the Bible school in Bangladesh, an, a Muslim country. Seven received the Holy Ghost, and there was one baptized in Jesus' name. In Bangladesh, 1,150 filled with the Holy Ghost, 200 healed in Jesus' name, four brand new church plants, 99 baptized in Jesus' name. In Dhaka, 17 filled with the Holy Ghost. In Malta, 50 filled with the Holy Ghost and 12 healed. In southwestern area of Bangladesh, there was a crusade with over 1,000 filled with the Holy Ghost in a Muslim country. <laughs> hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. In the Dominican Republic, a new work in Mao. Two churches in the Puerto Plata area, they visit them there. And I want you to know, in that area, there's Santeria and Voodoo. But they had a wonderful service there. Four received the Holy Ghost in that area. Seven received the Holy Ghost in Region 7. A new church in La Vega. Juan Bautista, who I just saw, he's vice president of the work. Three received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. In Mar Paramaribo, Suriname, glad to report that, th listen to this one, a believer in Suriname dialed the wrong number and struck up a conversation with the person who answered. Stayed in contact with them and later witnessed to them about baptism. In January, they baptized him in Jesus' name. Come on, why don't some of you dial a wrong number? Oh, we can't do that, Brother Hal. They would think we're crazy. Go ahead with your 40-year mentality if you want to. But I believe God can direct a wrong number. Yo creo, hermana, que el Señor puede dirigir. Habla español, hermana. Que el Señor le bendiga. Hallelujah. No tenemos una mentalidad de 40 años, pero tenemos una mentalidad de 11 días. Hay victoria en el nombre del Señor Jesucristo. How many can say praise God? What you going to have? 40 years or 11 days? Come on. What is it? 11 days. 11 days. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Brother Hal, I can't give to the offering. I, I just don't have the money. Well, let me tell you some more stuff here. Hallelujah. I'm glad to report to you that in the country of Belize, well, over 500 filled with the Holy Ghost last year. And 250 baptized in Jesus' name. In Cuba. In Cuba. It was in the Miami airport yesterday. I'd never seen it before. But they had special areas for those who were flying to Cuba. You can go to Cuba now. And you know what? We're there. Hallelujah. And I'm glad to tell you that recently in Cuba, Tolzigan, Cuba. Cuba. That's how you say it in Spanish. Hallelujah. I'll teach you how to say Spanish. Everybody say, Hallelujah. hallelujah. That's Spanish. Hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. 44 baptized with the Holy Ghost in Cuba. Four Trinitarian pastors baptized in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Along with three others. That's seven. Seven Trinitarian pastors baptized in Jesus' name. Now, if that doesn't make you happy, your wood is just too wet. That doesn't set your fields on fire. You got too much water on your fire. Hallelujah. Come on, I've come to tell you, God is with us. Nicaragua, the missionaries there, brother and sister Nicks, they only deputized four months. 
and they got back to the field. Listen, Matagalpa, the Lord ministered, and four received the Holy Ghost. Missionaries there, listen to this, between the two services, in another place, four in Centro Vida, 14 received the Holy Ghost, seven baptized. Street service, seven people filled with the Holy Ghost. Brand new SFC vehicle. Yeah. Ordained seven pastors. If it wasn't for I am global, if it wasn't for God helping us to have an 11-year mentality, they would still be on deputation, but they're on the field doing it. Come on, what are you going to have? An 11-day mentality or a 40-year? Spain, just in Barcelona. Everybody say Barcelona. That's how you say it in Castilian Spanish. In Central America, we say Barcelona. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But there, I'm glad to tell you, Trinitarian pastor baptized in Barcelona. 18 received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. In the city of Malaga, a new home group there, 36 in the first service and one baptized. In Croatia, a new church in Pula. In Central Asia, I'm not going to say enough that you have to edit it out of here, but I just want you to know we've got a church in every one of the Central Asian. Hallelujah. Well, we can't go there, Brother Hal. They're liable to kill us. Yeah, I know that. But great is God. I said great is our God. I said great is our God. Don't you get a 40-year mentality. Don't you get a 40-year mentality. Hallelujah. In the United Kingdom. In the United Kingdom. Baptized a Trinitarian pastor in Jesus' name just a couple of weeks ago. In Greece, four brand new works. Hallelujah. In Dordrecht, Brother Strange was just there and preached. And I want you to know there were four that received the Holy Ghost in Hufdorp. Hallelujah. And also two people baptized. Everybody say Hufdorp. Hallelujah. I don't know what that means. In another country, a country where the... Hallelujah. Glad to tell you that God is doing great things. Listen to this testimony. She was here. She had been having heart problems several years. Recently, after more heart problems, her doctor told her the only thing to do would now be gone through an open heart surgery. Not being a rich family, they asked for prayer in that country where... Hallelujah. They scraped enough money together to get going on the procedure. She went to her surgery appointment, and the surgeon looked at her medical report, then examined her twice. He left her room with her papers and scans, then came back and re-examined her and said, Lady, these are not your papers. Lady, these are not your papers. In that country... How, don't tell me you can't have revival in Norfolk. I said, don't tell me God take, can't take care of you. And finally he said, it is your paper. Something has happened. You know what happened? She was touched by the hand of God and healed. That doesn't happen with a 40-year mentality. It happens with an 11-day mentality. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank God for missionaries. Here's a report from, where's this from? Oop, it's another one of those countries I'm not supposed to say. Hallelujah. But I'm just glad to tell you that there's a group of 300 in that country I'm not supposed to tell you about. Hallelujah. That about the oneness of God. And the pastor of that group, the context said, he said, I know why you share this with me. He was a pastor of 300 people. He said, you knew that I would understand and would tell everyone about this revelation. All in total, in the past six months, he is baptized. He has con connected us to leaders in that country that is a hallelujah of over 10,000 people. And I know this missionary. He had problems. We almost didn't send him back to the field. Now whether he was wrong or we were wrong, I don't know, but God is right. Hallelujah. And I've just got news for you. I thank God for what God is doing. Come on. We can reach our world with the gospel. I said we can reach our world with the gospel. I said we can reach our world with the gospel. Hallelujah. 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 Here's a testimony from Russia just recently to baptize in Moscow in the name of Jesus. In the Pacific, a church starting in Tahiti. Anybody want to be a missionary to Tahiti? Hallelujah. 
You may think it's fun. It's not. Hallelujah. In New Caledonia, beautiful islands. I want you to know three baptized in Jesus' name. Eight first-time visitors in Numea, the capital. Six of which have returned. Regular services and teaching in Cutio Church. I think that's the name of it. In Valde de Colon's home group. Glad to tell you in Vanuatu. Vanuatu. I'm glad to report to you. Hallelujah that in Vanuatu, the Bible, scholar, uh, Bible school is doing great. In the Solomon Islands. And I'm glad to tell you that in the Solomon Islands, we have two new churches opening. Guess on what island? Guess on what island? The island of Pentecost. Hallelujah. Isn't that great? Isn't that great? Hallelujah. I don't know where the musicians are, but y'all come. You're not taking a hint. Hallelujah. So just come on up. Hallelujah. 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 In the Philippines, three to five hundred received the Holy Ghost. Conventions so big, there's not places big enough for them. Did you know in Venezuela, listen to me, in Venezuela, they're suffering persecution. But you know what? Venezuela is now our largest work in the entire world outside of North America. 430,000. They don't have enough to eat. Did you hear what I said? They're starving to death. But you know what? God is pouring out His Spirit and the church is growing. 430,000 believers in that country. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Glad to report, hallelujah, that in South America, in Argentina, they had a youth conference with 2,000 young people. Glad to tell you that in, in uh, Paraguay, there was a crusade in the city of Encarnacion, 25 filled with the Holy Ghost. Men's camp, 10 received the Holy Ghost in Paraguay. 25 received the Holy Ghost in another crusade. In Colombia, building a brand new college that will be dedicated on the 5th of, uh, 5th of June. Hallelujah. And this year, 47 graduates in the Bible college. I'm not going to get a 40-year mentality. I said, I'm not going to get a 40-year mentality. Would you stand with me right now? And would you raise your hands? And would you ask God to touch us right now in the name of Jesus? I'm asking you, God, to reach out and bless us right now, Lord. I'm asking you, God, to have your way in the name of Jesus. I don't recall ever doing a message like this. I usually do all my testimonies at the beginning. But God told me to do that today. First of all, to thank God for those missionaries that sent those reports in. Every one of those things I read were from missionaries that you support. I thank God that they didn't have a 40-year mentality. In Russia right now, the Moseses... We don't know how he is. I think he's okay, but he had a heart attack yesterday. He was on the web with the mask on him, and he's in intensive care in a medically induced coma right now. Not an old gentleman. He's in his 50s. That's young, folks. When you get my age, that's a whippersnapper. Hallelujah. And I'm not teasing, but I thank God for people that had many reasons to come back home. But thank God they're on the mission field preaching the Word of God. Thank you when it comes to giving for not having that 40-year mentality. But we've got a mentality. I've got to give what I can. Because there was one testimony in here I wanted to share and what I do with it. Hallelujah. It's about faith promise giving. I don't know where it went. It's in there somewhere. I'd never find it. But it's about someone that said, a little girl that said, I, I, I want to give. And so she began to sell a few little things for her faith promise. For what we're doing today. And God blessed her. And God gave her a twice the amount what her pledge was because that's what happens when you give like we're going to do today hallelujah when you step out by faith and say God I'm going to ask your help would you raise your hands and ask God what he wants you to do today would you raise your hands and say God when it comes to PIMs for Global Metro and Virginia and other missionaries when it comes to Augusta Conference Center when it comes to the Father's Day offering and the Mother's Memorial offering and the She's for Christ and the report for TCM and other projects, I'm not going to have a 40-year mentality. I'm going to have an 11-day mentality. In the name of Jesus, 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 in the name of Jesus. 
Come on, raise your hands and talk to the Lord right now. As our pastor comes, would you ask God what he wants you to do? far beyond our walls and while we're going on and having church and things are happening here God has taken the things that happen in this service because we make a commitment to say over the next six months we're just going to give something every week to missions here's what I'm asking you to do all of our elders and ministers have some of our missions cards I want to invite the entire congregation if you would to come and if you have an ink pen on your purse or pocket or whatever, make sure you bring that with you Hallelujah! <laughs> but I want you to come elders if you want, want to uh, move out however they want to do it but just get one of these missions cards from them if you would and then stand with me around the altar and I'm going to talk to you a minute before we do this as that's happening would you sing one more time
we worship you. And Lord, we are committed to this kingdom. We are committed to this truth. I've been trying to weave the idea of missions giving into the culture of our church. Many of us are great givers to missions. And our church, as it's already been mentioned, is in the top 100 churches in our organization. But that didn't happen because of emotional giving. It didn't happen because we have people of substantive, substantial wealth. It happens just because all of us just do what we can and what none of us could do alone, we can do together. And so every week when we gather in for services, we receive our tithe, offering, and missions giving. And you will mark these gifts on the missions line, and everything that's marked in there goes into our missions account. And right now, we have reached a level where we are supporting missions works all over to the tune of over $100,000 a year. And uh, But for the next six months, we have obligations. If you look at your card, I'm asking you to join me again. Yes, Pastor Blankship will join you by reaching lost souls both locally and globally through our missions projects. We will pledge to endeavor to give faithfully over the next six months. Now, this begins May 1st, so technically... I guess kind of Wednesday night somewhere in our, in our services but between now and the end of October this is what we need to do in the end of October we'll renew this again because the Bible says that this gospel must be preached in all the world and then the end shall come and the Lord spoke to me time is short we don't can't waste services and so this morning I'm asking you to do something with me that's going to affect things for the next six months. That PIM line, that means partners in missions. That is things that we are committed to giving monthly. Missionaries that we have signed up to support various things, Virginia Home Missionaries, Global Missionaries, all together over the next six months, we need about $31,000 to cover all those obligations. We are continuing to give to our Augusta Conference Center, which is our district uh, campground facility that, again, trains so many young people uh, and so forth. We, we give a monthly offering to that. Our Father's Day and Mother's Memorial, those the ladies' division, the men's division, the youth division, and as Brother Hal already said, uh, every one of those divisions in turn does things for global missions. So we, we keep touching a lot of levels. And then there is miscellaneous support. That is things such as Tupelo Children's Mansion, Lighthouse Ranch for Boys. And uh, we just uh, sent $250, I think, this past week to Tupelo Children's Mansion that had a special need. Uh, those are the kind of things that are covered there, including in this particular one, I put some money needed in there to help with the printing of our new Experience Pentecost booklets. And tonight, I'm going to uh, present that to you. He's kind of doing missions one. I'm doing missions two tonight. But we're not uh, taking off or anything, but I want to preach to you the other side of missions. And I'm going to, we're going to have our new Bible study that we're rebooting for soul winning. All that's going to be available tonight. All together, it's about $50,000. And we've been hitting this. So here's what I'm asking you to do. Those of you who perhaps have never joined us in a missions pledge, I'm asking you to, to, to do it uh, because it's right. The whole purpose and point, nothing gets closer to the purpose of why we are a church. Jesus said, I've come to seek and to save that which is lost. And this is our responsibility. He said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. 
This pledge represents six months, or if you do things weekly, 26 weeks. If you can pray this next moment, ask the Lord what would he have you to try to do by faith. I'm not asking for wild things. I've had people turn in pledge cards for missions sometimes, and I just look at it and I chuckle. because uh, they, they, That's emotion. They got all happy. They're going to give $10,000. They're not even faithful in their tithing sometimes. I'm, so I doubt that's going to happen. I'm not asking for emotion. I'm asking for just level-headed realism. This is what I want to do for the kingdom of God. And then I'm going to figure on what I think I can do. Then I'm going to take just a little step further by faith. Now, some of you, like me, uh, have gotten to a level of missions giving that is significant. Week in, week out. I do mine weekly. And uh, I just don't have a lot of room for a lot of growth there to, to get emotional. But you know what I started doing the last couple of times? I'm like, okay, God, I don't know if I can do it, but I'm, gonna, I'm just going to increase mine even $5 a week uh, just as a step of faith. Just And you know what? I've done that the last two times, and it's been taken care of, and I never missed it. God just always made a way. I want to challenge some of you that are afraid of thinking I can't do it. Just make a small addition so that every time we gather for missions that you say, I want to reach just a little further, just a little more. And as your faith is, so be it unto you. So I'm asking you to pray. I'm asking you to, to as a matter of fact, every head bowed across this house, I want us to pray together right now. And let's seek the Lord for him to make provision right now in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for this service, and I thank you for Brother Howe's faith and passion work of the Lord and the good reports happening around the world. God, I thank you for what you've done in this church to give the people a mind for missions. And I'm asking you to renew that today in us. And God, renew our faith and let us take a step of faith today and make a commitment to the kingdom that will affect things around the world. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And everybody said amen. Everybody said amen. Somebody sometimes has said, you know, we need a building or this, that, and the other, and, you know, we, we shouldn't give to mission. You know, a few years ago when we refinanced uh, all of our campus, uh, we were at a place where we were, at the time, we were borrowing a million and a quarter, and that's a lot of money church and we were outside the bank parameters uh, because we weren't showing enough profit I tried to explain to them we are a non-profit organization <laughs> they didn't see the humor in that <laughs> but when the loan packet went in the agent called me and he said pastor you need to pray because the toughest loan officer got your packet he said she is notorious turning down more loans. He said, I'm, I'm discouraged. I said, well, God's in this. He's going to take care of it. And we prayed. About a week later, he calls me and he said, I've got some great news for you. He said, your church has been approved for your mortgage to take care of your campus and stuff. And he said, the toughest loan officer approved your loan. And they said, she wrote a, a note on it that I think you need to hear. She wrote it to the officers and she said, I have examined this church closely over the last week. And they're talking about our books. And she said, I know that this loan is outside our normal parameters. What she was saying is we didn't have enough equity. We didn't have enough this, that, or the other. She said, I know that. She said, but here is also what I noted. When I see how much money this church gives to missions, I recognize that they are passionate about their cause. And I believe that if this church gives that kind of money to missions, they'll make sure that we get paid. Therefore, I'm approving their loan. 
So the very thing that you think would hurt us was actually the thing that helped us. <laughs> because that's how it works sometimes in the kingdom of God. And since that time, we have our giving to missions has increased and increased. And I'm also happy to report in these number of years, we haven't missed one mortgage payment. We've not even been late on one mortgage payment. It's been paid every month ever because God makes the provision. Amen. So I'm asking you right now to just that. I'm going to ask our singers to sing. And here's what I'm asked to do. I want you to calculate 26 weeks if you do it weekly or six months if you do things monthly. But what I need is your name and a total, the total amount. In other words, do the math on the back or whatever you need to do. But just give me a total. And the reason we do this is because, number one, I want to send a letter uh, to all of you and thanks, but it also helps us to monitor and make sure that we're going to be able to meet our needs. This is also what I'm asking you to do. Our ministers that are up here that have uh, the cards already, I'm asking you while we sing to take and fill out your card. And I know some perhaps have a spouse that's not here. You want to talk with them. <clears throat> Tonight, we'll have some more turned in. And uh, even Wednesday, sometimes they trickle in. But uh, if you're able to do it today, it would be helpful to us. But I want you to just come and bring it back to one of the elders. And if you would remain in the area just for a moment before we dismiss, I would greatly appreciate it. But let's let's prayerfully fill it out, turn it in, in the name of the Lord. Stanley was mentioning to me, you know, this is something that happened after 
their, their charity gave $2,500 to our Cambodia trip happening next month. And it's an example of how you can't outgive God, folks. And you don't know how it's going to happen. But you just got to take the step to, to begin it, and God will make it happen. Amen. I want all the cards turned into Pastor Bembry. Elders, would you join him uh, in a circle there? And I know there's still cards coming in, but we're going to take the ones that we have as a point of faith, and we're going to lay hands on them. I want everyone here to put your hand out toward this altar, and we're going to pray by faith right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, every one of these cards that are going to be turned in today in the next few days represent faith. Every one of these cards represent hours that has worked and hard work people are doing to earn a living. They're bringing a portion of that to your kingdom to fund the preaching of the gospel around the world. And God, I'm asking you to bless it. I'm asking you in Jesus' name anoint, respond to the faith of every believer and let provision come. Lord, bless your people over these next six months uh, and give them provision not only to make their mission pledges, but provision that blesses them even above and beyond. We'll give you the praise and glory in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And everybody said amen. Would you clap your hands to the Lord and give him a shout of praise to Glory. <laughs> Greet one another. Shake hands with one another. God bless you. You're dismissed today in the name of the Lord. Thank you for being faithful. We'll see you.